Emotions are escalating and despite the Dow Sour Upside, targets are still being met with accuracy. It is important to take note of the surrounding signals, which is why this thread of analysis is very special. Some of the top Archibald's master students have joined me to search for the right puzzle pieces. We may have just found the next moves coming for GME. Welcome back to the channel on this silly Saturday. This is Arca and let's dive into GME. Let's kill them, team. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. Please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, do everything necessary to get this thing to live long, thrive, and survive. Let's go ahead and dive into GME here. On the 12-hour time frame, as you can see, the upside targets have absolutely been met, right? We were talking about a 2385 target to come on Friday, but looks like the top target came up to around 2391. Goodness gracious, we missed it, right? But... <laughs> But yes, we have absolutely met those targets, team. Now, what could be next for GME in the coming sessions, right? I want to go ahead and let you know here that there is the firing of a signal here on a 12-hour time frame that started right about here at around that $20.93 level. And to the upside here, we are absolutely looking at some powerful moves. Please take a look at stochastic momentum here with an absolute upside posturing and continuation of volatility, which is absolutely the signal and some of the signals that we look out for for uh statistical properties now in this in this uh while this is being said we definitely have to take a look at the daily close right because the daily close usually tells us that we could pull back the, you know 30 to 50 percent of that prior bar which is this one this one existing here the curious thing here is is that if we take a look at every time frame, you're, you're going to notice down here below the price that there is no countdown happening, right? Except for a select few. As you can see here, the only one that has a countdown is the five-day time frame, which means, now look, look at the weekly, right? It's not there either. The bi-weekly is there, right? The monthly doesn't either, and the bi-monthly doesn't either. What that means, guys, is that we have a bi-monthly close, a monthly close, right? We also have a weekly close, a four-day, three-day, two-day, and daily close. All of these time frames have closed simultaneously. It makes it a little challenging to understand where price action is going to go. But if we're going to look at something per se, the monthly time frame, right? This is telling us that we may actually draw down 50% of the bar, right? Which would take us to around $21. But what would stop us from getting there in the first place? Well, several things, actually. First of all, there's a gap right in here in the monthly time frame. That's leading towards the target of around 20, uh, 2221, which is confluent to the bottom side of this monthly time frame, right? But if we start to look at the bi-monthly time frame, we're actually already 50% retraced. Hmm. So that means that the downside here may actually be very limited. Now, we are in the process of converting this monthly, bi-monthly bar here into a support, that very bottom which means that we may still see upside coming in since we already got that 50% retrace of the bi-monthly. This is a huge spinning top doji, right? It is an indecision candle telling you that the bears and the bulls are an equal, uh, they're, they're, yeah, I guess they're at a tie per se, but that's okay. We have plenty of other time frames to determine what could happen here. Okay, now the weekly time frame here is closing on a very, very bullish green candle and a true outside green bar from that prior week. Awesome. Let's go down to the four-day time frame and see what's up. Now, look at the four-day four time frame. Many of you know this strategically. Many of my master students already know this as well. This is a huge bullish engulfing candle, true outside green bar from that prior one on a downtrend, by the way, which means that we could be facing an upside now with higher probability because of the formation analysis on a larger time frame, four-day time frame. Let's see the three-day. Three-day time frame as well. Take a look at this. Down, uh, downtrend here. True green outside bar with a bullish engulfing already presented as well. Massive, massive signals here. The buy daily time frame above its range, which is right here at around 23.12, way above that, right? Daily time frame. This is almost a Marabazoo candle where it's not giving back anything from which it is gained. And it's outside of that range, just like the buy daily of the 23.09. Guys, this is enormously bullish what we're taking a look at here, right? Of course, we can experience some, some, uh, some drawdowns here. But if I were to say anything, maybe the pre-market on Tuesday, because remember, uh, Labor Day is on Monday, right? Maybe the, maybe the, 
the pre-market on Tuesday can bring us down to around 2274. Uh, which is, you know, roughly right around this area here to kind of pull back that 50% of the prior day and then start, you know, start the upside again. But I do have a few things to show you, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to the good news here. Now, what you're observing here is the official firing of a daily time frame volatility versus momentum signature. Now, this is something that we've always done here in the Arco Bulls trading team. M many of you have also followed me because you know that the system works you know that the system has been giving us upside probabilities with outstanding results. And I'm using the same system here for GME. Not only that, is that I also have a very special student, right? Her name is Jen. She has actually joined me here to identify the probabilities of continuation to the upside via backtest using the same system. Now, I mean, this is her thread of analysis. This is her thread right up here, right? So thank you so much for uh for this gen really appreciate you um and i will say that her data is outstandingly similar to mine on a daily time frame so let's why don't we why don't we go ahead and go uh go in on that for now okay so let's take a look at this let's start off with the daily time frame right because this is the one that i have the data for as in i have all the back test criteria take a look at this massive massive back test this is the one that I just performed over the weekend here for you guys so that we can determine the higher probability moves to the upside or downside, okay? Now that we have that data, what are the conditions? Anytime that volatility has expanded above this, this neon green line, which is the 15% of critical contraction, anytime that volatility has expanded beyond that and has an upside pivot on stochastic momentum, I have measured every single last iteration on the daily time frame that that has happened right? The upside. The red markings are the ones where it didn't succeed. So now with that said, check this out. Using volatility versus momentum on a daily time frame from critical contraction to expansion, we have a total iteration count of 106 and 80 of those have been guessed correctly to the upside, giving us an average upside accuracy of 75 spot 47%. Now the average upside thrust on this move is about 11 spot 19%. So that means that 70 over 75% of the time when that criteria happens, we are to face an average move of, of over 11%. Now, if we're observing that 11% move as we speak, well, let's go to the 12 hour time frame so that we can see exactly how far we've moved, right? So we haven't actually moved all the way upside of that 11%. Now, where did the signal fire though, right? Let's go ahead and go over that criteria as well. Let's see. Here we go. The signal has fired at 2192. So that would be right about here. It would be on the daily right there at the opening of Friday. That's when the signal fired. Okay. So now from Friday, that move has happened already. Th that's what data does for you guys. Okay. As soon as it fired off, price action continued towards the upside to meet that 11 spot 19% with an over 75% probability. Guys, just real quick, hear me out here. The reason I know this is because I am a stock trading instructor. I want you to be able to sign up for this course. Okay, it is mine. I want to teach you exactly how to do this. Okay, arcmasterscourse at gmail.com. Reach out to me so that I can get you the syllabus, so that I can get you uh, the, the, uh, uh, the disclaimer, everything, right? Everything pertinent to all of the courses that are coming up. I want to teach you how to do this. This is absolutely something that I teach every master student and Jen is one of them. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue on here. No more excuses. Make a better, make a, make a change for your trading portfolio. Make a change for your career here. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue on. Now that we have that path already set, the 12 hour time frame is telling us that we've actually moved about nine spot 52% from the firing of that signal of 11 spot 69, which would take us to about $24.28. We are currently at 23.48. Now, the standard deviation means that from the firing of the signal, which was down here at that uh, 20, 21, uh, 92 or whatever, that 2180 something, whatever that was, that we can deviate downward 12%. So we know exactly the drop as well, but it didn't actually do that. From the firing of the signal, we went straight up, 
right? It actually deviated maybe minus, I mean, I'm sorry, it deviated like what, a 1% or less, less than 1% and then continue to the upside. Okay, so now this leaves us with further data. That means that we're about to exceed that top side, right? It looks like we're going to be hitting that $24 and 28 cent uh, zone here on uh, come Tuesday. So what happens then? Well, guys, this is where you start getting a little more creative with data. First of all, the standard deviation can be used towards the upside as well. So that $24 and 28 cent zone would actually turn into $24 and 48 cents, but we don't want to hear that. We want to know what more, like what can happen beyond that data. Okay. So this is where the upper and lower bounds of the first, second, and third, and third standard deviation come into play. This is where I have calculated this for you as well. Okay, now check this out. If we exceed the 11 spot 119, uh, 19% of the average upside, we still have the upper bounds of the first, second, and third to look out for. So let's go ahead and speculate here. From the firing of the signal roughly around that 2192, or uh, let's just say, let's just meet it to that line exactly, right? Actually, I'm going to follow the data. Screw the bullshit. Here we go. 2192. Let's go ahead and uh, put ourselves to the upper bound of the first standard deviation, which is 23 spot 29%. So that would put us, that's okay there. That would put us roughly at about $27.04. Now, let's go ahead and now calculate the further ones. The upper bound of the second standard deviation would be 35 spot 39%. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 35 spot 39% takes us to about $29.68. Now, we have one more, and that would be the upper bound of the third standard deviation at 47 spot 50% to the upside. Let's go ahead and find out what target that would lead us to, right? So roughly about that 2192, let's go ahead and calculate 47 spot 50. Here we go. And that would take us roughly to about $32.34. Very nice. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and take care of these targets as we go, little by little. Now, in the title of the video, of course, I'm going to probably name it uh, 47 spot 54% upside potentials or something like that, right? We're going to get the viewership here. We're going to make sure that we can get people to understand that there are probabilities to the upside. Now, the probabilities of reaching the 11 spot 19% of around that 24, over like 24 and a half dollars. That's already with an over 75% probability and working out pretty damn nicely with an iteration count of 106 and 80 being guessed correctly to the upside. That's pretty freaking awesome to me. All right. So now you kind of know the targets here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure to release another video on this, uh, tomorrow. Right, so that we can um, potentially identify the entry criteria, how the play is going to work out. But I wanted to just express to you, this to you first, okay? Now, remember, guys, I want you to also join me to the trading team because these links that you're seeing on the left and right, they, I'm sorry, in the left top and left bottom, they're not going to be around for long. This is me allowing you to join the team for a one-time fee. And that's not always going to be there, okay, guys? Otherwise, it's just a monthly fee that you can get into the Archibald's trading team in the Discord, and then do your thing, okay? Take advantage of this while it is there. All right, guys, so remember, the spots are filling up for the Archibald's master's course for the beginner's charting and uh, trading mentorship, okay? So get in touch with me immediately. All right, guys, I wanna see you there. I wanna see you make a change. We're about to start this in about two weeks, okay? So get your butts in it, enroll, and I'll see you in class, all right? Thank you very much for watching, team, and we're gonna go ahead and go over more criteria tomorrow. Please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just, as just a form of entertainment, as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever, ever, ever, ever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well, a very, very good rest of your night and or day, and I will catch you at the bell on Tuesday. Adios, team.